Hello there, YouTube. I hope all y'all are having a blessed day. We are here today with part two of our February block of the month, which is the lovely tulips that we have here. And I hope you will come along with me on this block series. It is the 2024 block of the month. It is raw edge applique. 3D flower, slow stitching, quilt as you go, and I am just having so much fun. Here's January that we did the poppy, and here are the tulips, and next month we're doing dogwood. So if you wanna learn how to do this, come along. Here is our block that we did on the last video, and it looks really nice. I have cut out a few tulips out of that tulip fabric that I showed you before, and this fabric is called Elizabeth's Studio, and this is the pattern DP533 Multi. I bought half of a yard chunk, and I have been cutting out the tulips to use. And I'm not using the really big ones because they're just too big. So I'm using kind of the medium range, like this size here, about two inch tall, you know, a bit like here, this is a nice one. This will be a little bit closer and this will be a little bit further away. I like an odd placement, so for this, I would do either three or five. This is the layout that I'm going for. I have multiple distances. So this is way in the back and that's the next closest. And then we have a bit of a medium here that I think I'll actually move down a wee bit. And then when you're laying these down, you wanna make sure that the stems are not all cockeyed unless it's a breezy day. And then this is the big one. I like this arrangement. Now I've gotten these new, they're called applique pins and they're really, really tiny. And they're from Clover and I will keep a link for these down in my Amazon store. So if you go down to the video description, you'll see a link to my Amazon store and I will include all the supplies that I am using that you can get from Amazon. I will pin them down and I will start stitching them down. I'm coming back to show you these little pins. Now, if you have arthritis, you might have trouble with these little tiny fiddly things, but I like them so far. They're small. They're only about three quarters of an inch tall and they're very, very thin. So they hold things down nicely and you don't have this jumbo quilting pin here that when you pick the fabric up to start doing hand stitching, you're gonna get stabbed to death. I have a piece of the batik that I'm going to use and I am just gonna use my rotary cutter to cut leaves and they can have some curve to them if you like and you can just whittle away at the edge. Now this is a big one, so it should be in the foreground. As they get smaller, they would fall back into the distance. Like this one would be back here somewhere. And remember, these blocks will all be trimmed down, so we have to, we don't want to put anything precious in the very edges because it may, it may end up getting lost. I've picked out a whole selection of colors that I'm going to use to stitch down, and I'm going to be using three strands of embroidery floss. This is six strands. Again, this is in my Amazon shop if you're interested. And I wanted to give you another tip. You can see how this is two strands Nope, three strands of embroidery floss. And you can see that it's all coiled around itself. If you pull quick, it's going to knot. But if you pull slow, it will untwist and you won't get a knot. And then you can let the, the twist come out of it. All right, I'm hoping that this angle will work for you. So I'm picking up the piece and I am bringing my thread up from the back and I am just going to do a running stitch securing down the edges. And again, if you pull slowly, you won't get your thread all twisted up. You could do running stitch, you can do back stitch, stem stitch, you could do blanket stitch if you like that. You could use all black and give it a cartoony effect. Put it down occasionally and just spread that out so you don't get too much puckering. I love the texture that the stitching gives this, but you don't want to suck up the whole the whole block. And 
Again, I was originally shooting for 12 inch or 12 and a half inch unfinished. And if I have to cut them down smaller, that's fine with me. I am not going to be using this on a bed. It is for decorative use. Now you can see it, it puckered up there. Put it down and stretch the thread out. You can see how I'm doing this. And again, what you're trying to do is create feeling of depth. That's why you have certain leaves on top of things, other leaves behind things, and you're just playing with that effect of depth. Here is the first tulip. And you can see I did a little bit of additional stitching along the petals, just a, a little more texture. If, you, if you're new to sewing, I am making a quilter's knot. I have the, the end in my finger and I'm just making a few wraps around the needle and I'm pulling it through my hand and I'm pulling it slowly so it doesn't tangle. And now you have a nice little knot there. So I decided to go through some of my yarns to see if I could find the appropriate color for the stems. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this yarn and for the way back, I'm going to use a single strand and for the mediums, I'm going to do two strands. And then for the bigger one, I'm going to do three strands and I'm gonna coil them together and I'm going to couch them down with one strand of this embroidery floss. I wanted to come back and give you a tip. I'm going to be using a tapestry needle to kind of snake this yarn in and around the flowers to get it to be secure. I'm gonna come up through here and at some point I have to actually go above the lace. There we go, now above the lace. And I'm going to snake it in there. And I'm just working my way down. And I'm going to slip the needle out in between some stitches and then pull down so that there's no, no gathering effect here. And then I just take, take it out, I can cut it right off the needle and then just take it back down and it's going to be secured down. I have gotten the stems down, I've gotten the trims that I wanted to use down and I'm gonna give you a quick look at the block and then we will get ready with our 3D tulips. So these are the fabrics that I'm gonna be using to make my tulips with. And I think that I'm also going to be using some more of the batik that I made the leaves in. And I'm going to be making the stems out of that. I'm going to cut strips, maybe a quarter of an inch, between a quarter and a half inch wide. And I'm going to make my stems with that. I also have to go through my button treasure to find some buttons to scatter around on the project. Now, in addition to making the petals, we can also do shading because if you look at these, these have some shading. They have some various different colors in them. I'm going to be introducing you to drawing on your fabric. I have a pile of color pencils. They are, this is Arteza and you get them on Amazon. I love their products. I will put these in my Amazon store. I absolutely love Arteza. They're great quality products and they have great prices. I also have the Prisma watercolor set and I also have some ink tense water soluble crayons and I love these. They're very intense as the name implies. We can use these and because this quilt is not gonna to be tossed in a washing machine, you really don't have to worry about using something that would come out in the wash because these would come out in the wash and they might stain. You can use these with wild abandon and you don't have to worry about it. And if you don't have any of these, you don't wanna buy any of these, you could also use watercolor paints. You could use a little acrylic paint. I have brought it over to my ironing pad and I flipped it over onto the back and I gave it a real heavy steam. You just wanna be careful because there are plastic sequins on here. I have, like I said, I've given it a really heavy steam from the back. I flipped it over, I blocked it, and then I used some steam on my iron just by holding it up like this. 
and I am going to leave it here and I'm going to let it dry and when I'm done with making the petals then I will come back and take this off the mat. I am starting with the pink and I'm going to draw some petals and I'm going to make the petals pretty much this tall because the largest tulip in the fabric that I stitched down for the background is about this size. So I'm gonna go pretty much full size here. And I am going to kind of make U-shaped petals, remembering that I need, and this will get caught in the seam allowance, so I'm not worried about having salvage there. And we need two for each petal. So I don't know if any of you enjoy video games, but I have been enjoying this Disney Dreamlight Valley. I'm finding it very, very relaxing. I love the bright colors. And I just, I like the old school characters the best. I just, you know, gives me, gives me nice memories. I know there's a multiplayer option. I've not tried it yet. And I'm really, really enjoying it. So if any of you play the game and would be interested and friending each other and visiting each other and things like that, doing quests together, let me know in the comments. And you can join, join my Discord and then we can hang out together. So that's three petals. And I'm not doing anything fancy here, I'm just drawing a U shape. And I wanted to also let folks know that I'm gonna be doing a giveaway when I hit 15,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you have not subscribed yet, please do go down there and hit that subscribe button. It really, really, really helps support my channel. It helps buying all of the supplies that I use. It helps in coming up with new ideas. And I just so enjoy getting to know you and just making friends. So please do consider hitting that subscribe button and please do also hit that like button because that helps tremendously. That lets YouTube know that you like my content. So I think that six petals is more than enough. And then I will hop on over to my sewing machine and I will sew those together. And these are going to be easy, easy to sew. It's gonna be the same as the poppy. And I wanted to let you all know, if you are, if you have any questions about my techniques or any of the methods that I'm using for this project, for this series of blocks, please look at all the videos that I have made in this series because I discuss different techniques and I discuss tips and tricks in one video and I may not always remember to repeat myself at ad nauseum in every video. So please do go back and check the playlist. I will have all sorts of information available in, in each video. So please go ahead and watch each video in the series. And you can actually taper these in if you like. Um, I'm going to be tapering in the, the yellow one for the bud. This is going to be our bud. So these are going to be thinner and they're going to be more tapered inward at the top. There are our petals. I have closed my rotary cutter. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I am going to sew all the way around my petals. This is the bottom of the petal. So I'm going to start sewing about there and I'm gonna go around to about there. And I'm leaving this open so that we can flip it inside out and use our pokey tool to get it all nice and smooth. Then I'll go over to the iron like I did with the poppies and I will give them a good, good press. And then I will come back and we will start making our flowers. I have all my petals sewn and I'm just going to give them a trim and I'm going to do a seam allowance of about somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. There's not going to be a lot of tension on these seams. They're not going to be under constant wear. So you can make them a little bit skinnier if you like. I did wanna come back and let you know that when you have concave curves like this, you're going to wanna take your scissors and clip those curves. Not a lot, 
just go up to but not to the stitching I'm going a couple threads away from the stitching and that's all you need to do and that way it will flex when you go to turn it inside out to turn these I'm putting my finger in here now there's one thing I want to let you know too you don't have to worry about closing the bottoms because it's all going to be stitched down that's what we're going to be using it to sew it down so I'm sticking my finger in here all the way to the corner and I'm pinching and I'm sticking that out sticking my finger out and then just pulling it all the way out like a sew and then I'm sticking in my pokey tool and I like to run the edge of the pokey tool around the seam it helps the seam to lay f nice and flat you don't want to push real hard because you don't want a big hole in the top of your flower and I like to leave my mistakes in oops oh well I have all of my petals pressed I'm going to pleat the fabric like this because when you right now it's pretty floppy but if you pleat it you give it body see how it stands up now and it gives you a nice little curve there I've got some threads out here and I have made a little pleat in the bottom and I'm just going to take some tiny stitches no one's going to see this so you don't have to worry about it I'm going to start start getting that sewn down a wee bit just in the center and I can tuck stem back here and I'm only going to be sewing it down in the middle because I need to be able to wrap petals around each other so these are just a couple of tacking stitches just to hold it in place while I am working so do you see the method to my madness here by putting that little pleat in there it gives it body and helps it stand up so now the next petal I'm gonna give it another pleat like that and I'm basically going to do the same thing and then I'm going to wrap it around uh, at least by like half and I'll sew that down and then I'm going to pleat and take the next leaf and wrap it around and sew that down and we can manipulate the petals after the fact if you want one of them you know opened up a little bit you can take a small tiny tack stitch back here and it doesn't it only has to be through the back back side and it will make the petal go out like that again this quilt is for decorative use only it is not meant to be on a bed and used daily it is not meant to be washed to clean it you would vacuum it or use a hair dryer on cool and now I'm going to take it and I'm putting it behind here and I am going to bring this to the front and tack it down to the block and you don't want to do too much tacking down close to the edges you're most concerned about the very center because you still need to be able to lift this up a wee bit to get the other petals down you won't be able to tuck them behind the the current petals if you have a whole if you have it sewn together all the way up to the edge so see now I can still pull that forward once again see how floppy it has no body and then you do this and it's like magic and as this starts coming around the front you're going to tuck the bottom under here like that so you don't have to worry about it showing because when you take the next petal you're going to kind of fold it under like that when you pleat it tuck it and wrap it and you won't see the raw edges you'll fold them under see I'm fanning out the petals and I am going to you know put some additional stitching in here once I have the flower all the petals added and then I'll stitch it down more securely but again this quilt is not going to require or not get a lot of heavy use so I wouldn't worry too awful much about it taking our next petal Again, making the pleats like that and I'm gonna wrap this one over here let me show you what I'm doing so I folded this petal back I'm taking the base of this petal and I'm tucking it behind and then letting it come over like so and you might need to use a thimble or something to help you out a little bit here and now I can take some more stitches back here down low to hold these petals together but now the last petal that goes on will cover the front and then that's when you're going to spend some time with your needle and thread and make buku mini stitches now see I have enough space here to tuck the front petal around 
we're going to do our pleating and I'm going to fold this out a bit more. I want a wider base and I'm going to take my pleat and you can angle your pleat too. You can go like that and then go like that and it makes, makes it like a cup. Can you see that shape? And I'm going to take some tacking stitches and I'm going to take them quite low. Now I put that there like that and I fold it up and I wrap it around this petal and this petal and sew down all along here. And this one will actually be tilted towards the viewer. I don't like that. And then you take subtle little tacking stitches, little invisible stitches along here and along here to hold the flower in the position that you want. Now I'm really squishing it down because I'm going to stitch here and I'm going to try and get the stitches close to the bottom and you might need a thimble or a pair of pliers or something to get the needle through the fabric. All right, that is enough to hold it there. And I am gonna take a couple of those applique pins. I love these pins, by the way. Oh boy, do I love these pins. These are epic. So I pull this up like that and I tuck this behind it like so. So it's just a matter of tucking and scrunching and you can tuck to your heart's content. So you're going to take a tacking stitch up here. You see how it's kind of like falling apart? Take a tacking stitch about midway up the petal and then another tacking stitch over here and then a tacking stitch here. And you're going to make these stitches so tiny no one's going to see them. Just you're going to catch a couple threads and then you're going to take another tacking stitch here and then finally here. And we're going to kind of sculpt the base nice and tight in here. And it's going to require a lot of stitches, but they're going to be tiny and they're going to be as invisible as you can make it. And I'm not worried about a little bit like this because that'll, that'll get tucked under and put your thimble on so you don't impale your finger. So I'm going to take the other needle and some of this thread and I'm going to do single strand and I'll use this to do the tacking stitches. Now my fabric has these little lines in it and this thread is the same exact color as, as the lines. So I'm going like four threads over and going back down. And that's my tacking stitch. Let's see how much shape that gives that. And I'm gonna take another one right close to where the petal edge is. And what I'm doing is I can feel the seam here on this petal, and I can feel the seam here on this petal. You pop that up like so, and there you have your opened up tulip. I still have to do this petal here, so. So it just dawned on me, I'm, I'm finishing up this flower, and it just dawned on me that I didn't use any of these ink tents. If you wanted to use them, in fact, what I'll do is I'll show you on this petal that was a, a boo-boo. See this? You could use regular crayons if that's all you've got. And then just take your finger and rub it a little bit, smudge it. So that really, that really adds to it. And you can get as bold as you like, you know, if you want to add more colors or if you want to add darker lines. Let's see, here's a bit of a purple. So you could do that down closer to the edge and help blend it a little bit. That's what I love about these ink tents. You can actually get away with doing that. And you can add shading. And if you want to add a little bit of contrast or other variations, you can use some like orange here. Go with wild abandoned. And think about the shape of a petal. You know, you want to start here and kind of cur curve the lines up and make the, make the curve less as you get to the middle. And you can get in here with the purple down at the bottom. And you can even add highlights. And they have white. You could add bits of white in here. And you can do this for a long time. You can just play to your heart's content. Take, take a petal that you screwed up and just see what happens with it. See all the color you can add? So don't be afraid to play. It's only a little tiny piece of fabric. What could possibly go wrong? So I apologize for <laughs> forgetting to do that. Here is the first tulip. At the very bottom down here, if you look on the inside of a tulip, so I am going to take 
button and stick it down there and sew that on. But as you can see, this is all stitched down all the way around. And I have the, the stem like this, and I'm gonna give it a bit of a curve there, and I'm going to give it a leaf that kind of goes like that. Petals are going to kind of make a, like a cone, kind of like that. And then the next petal will start back here and wrap around and be a little bit looser. As I'm making this, I'm saying, hmm, how can I neatly sew that down? I took like a half circle. I thought that I could get this to wrap around like that and then sew it down and it would be a little bit neater. And I've got two of the flowers sewn down. So I'm gonna go back with matching thread and I'm gonna go in and tack it down along the back to give it some support so it's not flippy floppy. You can go back to the poppy video and watch me put the bud together there. And then I'm going to pick out my buttons. I will come back for the big reveal. You're not missing anything because again, I have gone over these methods and these steps in the poppy block. And I'm going to try and make the videos progressively shorter as we go because the details and the instructions will be in previous videos because it, I'm doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. I'm coming up with new ways to come up with the flowers, of course, and that I will detail. And I'm, I'm going to continue to go through making the backgrounds of the blocks because I just find it so enjoyable and the slow stitching, I absolutely love it. I love the way it looks. And then I will stop showing all of sewing the stems on because there it'll be in previous videos. Been there, done that. And then we will we'll focus on doing the background in one video and then we'll focus on doing the flowers in the, in the following video. And that should make the videos progressively shorter and you will have the playlist on my YouTube channel that gives you all of the instructions. Here it is. Here is our February block of the month. These are tulips and we have some buttons. I put large buttons down at the base of the flower and what that does is it allows the flower to cup outwards like a tulip does, like a little cup. So there's an idea for you. And I have some of these exquisite antique glass buttons and here's more of them. And there's a couple of these here. Here we are, YouTube. Here we are. We have January, which is the poppy, and we have February, which is the tulip. And next month for March, we're going to be doing pink dogwood. And I want to thank you again for your patience. So I want to thank you so very much for watching. And I want to thank you for coming along with me on this series. And I do hope that you will give this a try. It's not difficult at all. Just follow along with me and you can learn how to make 3D flowers easily and confidently. And don't be afraid to explore and try things out on your own because you never know what you might come up with. It's okay to play. And if you don't wanna waste good fabric, go to the thrift store and buy some secondhand clothes and play around with that fabric. I am so blessed to have all of you in my life. And I do wanna remind you that when I hit 15,000, I will be doing a giveaway. I love you all very, very much. And I am so, so delighted with each and every one of you when you, when you leave a kind comment on my videos. I just so enjoy getting to know you. And this is a shout out to Marion from Oregon. And I've been having so much fun getting to know her in the comments. And I love you all, each and every one of you. And I will see you next time. God bless. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, Campbell.